Good morning, everybody. It's the 8th of October. We're Signal Centre Talking Ball. I'm Joan Aber, joined by Steve O'Hare. Morning, Steve. Good morning, mate. Good to be back. Yeah, good to be back. It's like my new house. I love it, yeah. You've done a cool, fantastic job of uh, decorating it. Since yeah, it just in. like... I had a couple of hours spare last night and I thought yeah, I'd just bought it fully for it. furnished. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to share my screen, Joe. It's, uh, it seems to be um, not letting me at the moment. Uh, new house bit... settings. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um... Mm. Okay, well, you try and do that. I'll rattle through some news then, shall I? So we've uh, obviously got non-farm payrolls this uh, this afternoon. Um, so typically that's on the first Friday of the month. First Friday of the month was the first of the month last week. So uh, we don't normally have to wait this long for um, non-farm payrolls at the start of the month. But um, it looks like we're in for a bigger number, um, judging by what we've seen earlier this week. And uh, it's expected to be the last one that the Federal Reserve members get before they convene in November to make a widely expected decision on the beginning of tapering of asset purchases. Though some officials have expressed a desire to see more solid signs of improvement, a number as low as 238k would likely satisfy uh, Jerome Powell, uh, Powell's criterion for tapering. That's according to uh, the chief US economist at uh, Bloomberg Economics. Um, Chinese shares advanced after the mainland market reopened after a week-long holiday. Technology shares showing resilience in the face of the regulatory and economic uncertainty. Um, what else have we got going on? Um, supply chain issues have forced Tesla to increase car parts, at least temporarily. Uh, the CEO, Elon Musk, told the firm's annual shareholders, uh, sorry, that told shareholders at the annual general meeting, uh, a double hit of global shortage of chips and ships is the only thing standing in the way of Tesla's maintaining sales growth in excess of 50%. Chips um, and chips, eh? Chips and chips, yeah. Um, so we, uh, I guess we've got earnings season coming around pretty soon, have we, Steve? As well? We certainly have, mate. Yeah, we have. We're going to do a little few pieces on earnings season this um, this quarter. So, uh, yeah, look cool. out for them. Yeah, uh, we'll uh, probably introduce it into to this as well, I guess. Yeah, why not? I, I think it's uh, that's the plan, mate. Um, cool. get some information out there on the earnings coming up it's a very exciting time for the guys who trade around that time uh, yeah sure so, yeah we'll try and offer some um information and um our uh, take on everything nice so um, um, it's been pretty volatile over the last few days hasn't it but looks like we're roaring back in typical fashion it's fantastic isn't it it's yeah, fantastic I, I managed the, to do okay in the dax did. while you're away did you <laughs> i, I did went sort of... yesterday i've never seen you go long in the dax before no, I, I, you know what? I've sort of like I've started to now appreciate what the manipulators of the market do. Right, <laughs> and they just, you know, it's it's you know the bigger the bubble, the bigger the bang. At the end of the day, that's what all I'm saying. You yeah. heard it here, first, second, third, fourth, fifth. But uh, Have you so I'm going to jump on screen. And now I'm going to jump off the call. You, if you can do FX, um, yep. because my screen is not allowing me to share, and so I'll jump off and then jump back on by the time um, you've finished. All right, mate. Don't be long. Okay, cheers. See you soon. Okay, so I'll get stuck into some FX then. While Steve sorts his shh out, I will uh, start with dollar index. So this continues to trade in this bullish channel. We broke through this 93.73 level. A good few days ago now, back at the uh, end of last month, and we've seen a little bit of a pullback to test that new support at 73, sorry, 93.73, and that's done a pretty good job seeing the buyer step back in. But it's contained uh, at the moment up at this 38.2% FIB level, which comes in at 94.47. So um, that is the key resistance for now. Um, and um, we need to see a break above these levels here at 94.47 and 94.74 to really get going on the upside. So we've got a nice double bottom pattern that's uh, you know, pretty much on the brink of completing, I would say, if you know, if not already, if you go by this level here. Um, and we can look for higher prices on this. So I've got a measured move of this double bottom taken from this low on the 6th of January to this high that we posted on the 30th of March. Projected higher comes in at 97.68 which is also a 61.8% FIB level of this entire move here from the highs that we posted back in March 
last year down to these lows uh, again that we posted in January so in and around here is where I'm ultimately expecting price to get to um, it looks like it's continuing to trade in a decent sequence of higher highs and higher lows so uh, that's where I'm hoping things will go to and on the flip side of that uh, we look at euro US dollar that continues to be uh, under a bit of pressure the charts sorry a bit little bit messy but we've got a big head and shoulders top pattern that's formed here uh, we've seen a breakdown through a number of support levels here uh, all of which have failed to attract new buying interest uh, the latest one being this previous swing low from back here in november which should be a now key horizontal support level we've broken down through that um, without really much in the way of buying support yes we had a, a little bit of a go here but um, prices have continued to move lower so we're fast approaching this 50 percent fibonacci retracement level of this entire up move from these lows that we posted in march last year to these highs that we posted in january uh, 50 percent is the next level below that looking down towards the 61.8 percent fib level at 1.1290 and then down here we have the measured move target of the head and shoulders top pattern very close by is a 78.6% FIB level, uh, which comes down at 1.1002. Uh, so potentially, you know, quite some significant downside potential on Euro US dollar over the medium to long term. Looking at cable, that broke down through some significant support at 135.71. We have seen a bit of a fight back, but price is now starting to um, move a bit sideways now into this sort of cluster of resistance levels uh, between 135.71 to 136.58. So I think as soon as we get any kind of uh, fresh selling impetus here, then we could see further downside. We are expecting a stronger non-farm number today, so that could be pretty bullish for uh, the US dollar. And as a result, that'll have a, a negative impact on cable and we could see lower prices. In terms of where I believe price could go here, uh, looking down at this 38.2%, which comes in at 131.65, um, and then down to the measured move of this top pattern, um, which is at 128.88. So, you know, potentially some more downside to come over the medium term. Um, some of the riskier assets were looking quite interesting, particularly Aussie Yem. It uh, can be quite a volatile pair and one that I've always quite liked to trade, but. Um, we can see price has been pretty choppy here. We've rallied into this big cluster of resistance levels, which, as you can see here, did a very good job um, prior to you know slipping lower. Maybe that will happen again. I know it's early in the session, but we appear to be forming a bit of a shooting star candle into this cluster of resistance levels. So there could be a good opportunity there for a short sell potentially in the very short term, expecting lower prices. Um, just seeing if there's any sort of trend that matches up. Not quite, but certainly not far away. Obviously, Looks like an inverse head and shoulders subjective. to me as well. Yeah, well, maybe. If it breaks through this, then certainly there will be a, a case for higher prices. But um, yeah, a bit of a, an inflection point potentially there, I think. Looking at Aussie dollar, that continues to not look particularly great. I know we've seen a little bit of a bounce, but it's still below this downtrend. It's still below this cluster of resistance here between 7405 to 7450. Uh, and for me, I'm still looking for lower prices on that. Uh, again, a stronger number today. We should see more strength in the dollar uh, and that will push this lower. Looking at Euro Sterling, that tried to break up through these resistance levels. And, you know, there might have been a few that were suckered in thinking this was an ending wedge and it was going to start pushing higher, but uh, failed pretty miserably, really, and has sold off quite aggressively and heading back towards these support levels down here at 84.50. Um, and if it breaks down below there, then we're looking for even lower prices down, down towards 82.75. And we've got to go back to uh, December 2019 when we were last at those levels. So um, could be uh, could be quite a, an interesting move there, potentially. We'll have to wait and see how it acts to that support at 84.50. Um, well, I was looking at a few other markets, but um, I think that pretty much wraps it up. I need to do a bit more. Uh, analysis which I'll do over the weekend on these markets and come back with a fresh look next week. Steve, I'm going to hand it over to you. Are you all sorted on your charts? Uh, all seem to be sorted, mate. Uh, we had a, a bit, yeah, pretty decent turnaround in um, in oil yesterday. Uh, so I'll start with that. 
Um, obviously, we've talked about this uh, top information that's been taken out uh, as of this week. Uh, we're actually running into resistance now, just short of the $80 barrel, uh, $80 a, a barrel uh, price in WTI crude oil. Um, so that looks to be being tested currently. Uh, we can see the real turnaround. We uh, yesterday we had a bearish outside candle looking pretty ominous for oil. Uh, we had the spike lower down to 74.75 and um, then we saw the big bounce, uh, the big turnaround and it looks like it's going likely to extend higher again. On my, um, uh, let's see, on a, is that the weekly? No, that's a monthly. Let's get the weekly up there. Basically, longer term chart. I don't know why it's not on here. My, um, we, we we talk about obviously impulse waves and and things like that from from the market. And we are. This was potentially the third wave, then the correction lower. However, this is uh, now extended. The third wave has extended higher, and we're in the midst of the fifth wave. Um, wave three is normally. The, the biggest wave, um, but uh, so wave five should be shorter than wave three. Uh, so we're looking at 87, 89. Um, however, looking at the overall reversal from the all time highs, which we go back to 2008 for that one second. Try and get these lines. Oh. Um, we are only towards the 50%. I mean, it's only 50%. 50% is still a decent retracement, but um, there's plenty more to come potentially. We could still sort of see prices up towards the, the 61% retracement, and that's, that would still be a natural retracement. But we can see how um, this can be deemed as an inverse head and shoulders as well. Um, potentially sort of seeing this as the right shoulder, this is the left shoulder, this is the head, and extending higher from here. Uh, would basically take us way up to, feels like I'm in the wrong chart package. Nothing seems to be working. Back up to... Someone messing with your charts. The heady they? heights. Yeah, I mean, I, I did draw it in yesterday, this arrow here. Let's get rid of that one. Up towards the, the highs, if that plays out this... Wow. Inverse head charge formation. And it has been talked about, people have been talking about $100 um, a barrel oil. Uh, for a while now. Obviously, if we jump across to Brent, this is where I've done it. Look, me getting all panicky, all conspiracy <laughs> theory. Um, Brent hasn't quite broken the high from October 2018. That's still got to be challenged. 86.62 it comes in at. Um, and yet, this, so that is naturally where we're looking for. And again, the 50% uh, retracement, it comes in at 82.80. So we're on that now. Um, so, yeah, there's still uh, a bit more on the upside on oil uh, and there's nothing really more to say about it. Um, with obviously dollar strength, that should be impacting negatively on oil, but it hasn't. It's it's really um, sort of shrugged that off. And uh, it's it's obviously down to the, the, the supply issues, the, the, the sort of like what OPEC are doing in manipulating the um, the price or the or the um, the resource itself. So, gold for me is in a bullish flag formation. This has got a while to play out. We're talking, you know, months rather than days. Um, and it has had another retest of this seventeen twenty level, uh, which it bounced off rather nicely. Um, so we've got basically the potential for. I would call this a double bottom because if we go back to the this. Um, this candle here. This was an overnight Sunday overnight move, a very uh, very low volume, um, high volatility move, uh, which happened when everyone was sleeping, or oh, most people were sleeping. The algos weren't, uh, and so really, I, I I think we can say safely say that 1718 to 1720 support level. If we start to challenge this 1834 level, that for me would be a potential for a double bottom. And uh, we could extend that higher. Potentially, we could be looking at another $120 on the upside, which would take us up to uh, towards the all-time highs. It would be like a 61% retracement of the move from the all-time highs. So that's something to definitely to look out for. 
um, and we can see on the shorter term charts, take a look at the four hour chart, we've broken above the Ichimoku cloud. However, the lagging line, which is, where are you lagging line? It's very hard to see just here. Lagging line is at 17.55. That needs to break above the cloud as well for confirmation of a break. So if we look at it, we've got maybe a complex inverse head and shoulders formation. Um, I think if we get a, a break of the 18, um, sorry, what am I talking about? 1833 is way up there. If we get a break above this 1770 level, uh, I know we've got resistance at 1790 to 1800, but a break above the 1770 level, I think really brings this um, formation onto the onto the charts and, and we'll look at it a bit more seriously. So be aware of that, 1770. Non-farm payroll today, obviously, Joe. So um, these volatile moves could happen. And so we, we, we need to be aware of them. Uh, yeah. Let's take a look at uh, indices. Yeah, lovely little uh, volatile sell-off while you're away, Joe. Um, again, it's, it's sort of held around about, well, FTSE held at 69, around about 69.50 and bounced really aggressively from there. Um, obviously, dollar strength helps the FTSE. Um, we managed to get down to some significant lows in the DAX. Uh, I think uh, it got down to 14,800, uh, just above 40,800. That was a, a great trade idea from T-Ball that day. Um, reaching his target and it bounced from there that that is um significant low in the past so that's a key level to watch in the future when we get smashed through it um but in the meantime it's all hunky dory rosy so uh really challenged by the ichimoku cloud resistance however a break above 15,300 really opens up the upside for uh, you know 150 200 point potential move again non-farm payroll will really uh, probably govern the US indices and that will have a knock-on effect to uh, Europe. Uh, level to watch really the resistance 66.22 in CAC only about 40 points away um, although the, the candles we're seeing on the four-hour chart uh, aren't great there's a there's a bearish engulfing of the body there and a shooting star type candle here so maybe we're going to get a little bit of a, a snooze into the 130 volatility uh dow seems to have made up its mind it wants to go higher um 35000 really is the big round psychological number and barrier to break um and that opens up uh potential for a move uh, another 500 points higher probably up to the 35500 the all time highs nasdaq has suffered uh this week uh mainly due to the sort of outages of the the tech side of things that facebook obviously impacted um quite hard by that, but seems to have bounced back and shrugged it all off. Uh, a bit of a double bottom formation on the four hour chart, which projects a move higher uh, up towards 15,150. Um, next levels to watch after that, 15,261, uh, 15,400, and the all time high is not far away. So it all looks quite positive um, from the standpoint of uh, the people in the know, maybe they know, what the NFP is already, but that would be sacrilege, surely. You can't do that, Good. can you, Joe? No, triple, definitely not. No. We've got a triple bottom in the, in the, oh, big old arrow. Triple bottom in the S&Ps. So let's get a measured move target on this. Triple bottom has been confirmed. That shows we could extend this move up to the swing high. So that ties in quite nicely with that. Let's try and get a fib on that because this could be a great gun to the head trade idea, Joe. Uh, 78.6. Let's make sure I've drawn that arrow correctly. Uh, there. Yeah, not far off 78.6% FIB retracement, 4485. So uh, for me, that looks pretty good. This has rallied higher, potential for a, a bullish pennant, bullish flag. Um, 
I'm sure we'll see the volatility. I would say we'd find support around about 43.77. Uh, the thing with NFP, you really need to have a stop which considers the volatility that we could see. So it's pretty difficult to have a gun to head trade, but we've got a gun to head, so we've got to do it. Um, quickly go into Aussie 200 before I jump into cryptos. Again, triple bottom potential there, looks good. Uh, wow, China really has bounced back aggressively. Uh, it's broken above a previous resistance, excuse me, 15,700, and looks like it's kicking on. Next level of resistance comes in all the way here, 16,070, so just above the big round psychological number. Uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. Hang Seng bouncing back and above the um, previous resistance will now turn it to support there. Looks like it's uh, projecting higher also. Double bottom formation confirmed. And Hang Seng, uh, sorry, Nikkei uh, looks pretty good. It'd be nice to see a little bit of a dip down and that would be an inverse head and shoulders formation. But the level to watch is 28,300. That would be resistance. Quickly jump onto cryptos, which is just going to the moon at the moment, it feels. Uh, we've got resistance up at 57,000. Let's take a look at the weekly chart, which will have that figure. 57,128 is a 78.6. Uh, the bearish engulfing candle has been taken out this week, uh, and so further upside is expected. Uh, so bar any real shocks, um, this looks like on its way to the all-time highs, Joe. Uh, Cardano uh, has retraced from its all-time high very recently because that sort of like that jumped up to created a new all-time high while Bitcoin was sleeping. It's had a correction back, uh, got down to 193, bounced from there, trading around about 230, which was uh, one of the, the measured move targets we had and uh, looks like it's going to kick on from there. Uh, Ripple looking positive, Ethereum looking positive. Next level of resistance downward trending potential is around about 3,900 in Ripple. Um, sorry, I feel like I blabbed my way through that for a large part. And, no, um, you did good. I rushed it Thank you for bringing me up to speed with a lot of that <laughs> after yeah. a few days away from it. Yeah, but you um, missed it, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> it always seems to be the way. Every time you go away or step away from it, it just gets a bit interesting, and then you just oh, gutted, missed it. Never mind. Yeah, there always be another opportunity. Exactly. I did listen to a fantastic book though while I was away. You listened to a book? Yeah. Oh, I, I, I wish I, I could do that. I'll just get a book and just listen to it. It doesn't. Yeah. Say get, get yourself maybe an audio book. book. Yeah, audio book. <laughs> Honestly, it was, what was brilliant. It? Um, so. I'm sure anybody that's been involved in markets has listened to the uh, Market Wizards books. Jack but there's a, a new one out. Yeah, Jack Schwager. There's a new one out called Unknown Market Wizards. So um, it was about guys that you know aren't in sort of mainstream, but have just absolutely had it off uh, trading, just talking about their um, you know, experiences and being interviewed by by Jack Schwager. Awesome. Oh, right. Check cool. it out. I did, I did actually. Yeah, I did read about that book. That's about as far as I got. Yeah, Pulse, well, get yourself an, an, an audio book account and just listen to it. Yeah. It's good. Although, um, there's a couple of English guys who he's interviewing and a New Zealand guy. Uh, and the narrator tries to do an English accent and a New Zealand accent. And it's absolutely <laughs> terrible. <laughs> uh, okay, what have we got? Uh, so, gun to the head, Steve. While I was away, I just had a quick look. It looks like you did all right while I was away. Uh, I think I was flattish, wasn't I? Let's have a look. Um, I saw a couple of wins anyway. So, yeah, up, up well, 0.6R, that'll do. Yeah, days. Got it small. Uh, I did okay yesterday in the DAX going against my my inbuilt bear. Um, that must be the first time you've ever bought the DAX, I reckon, on this. <laughs> yeah, probably. And it worked. So, 100% hit rate when you're buying DAX. <laughs> Don't give a shit on that. <laughs> Uh, as soon as I, I just let let everyone know, as soon as I start getting bullish on DAX, that is the time to go against me. <laughs> All right, I'll take you up on that then. Because well, it is, isn't it? You have DAX. these, you have these huge big moves uh, that catch the market out when everyone's the same way round, and yeah. sort of like you know, I feel like I've been banging the bear drum along with uh, a minority of people over the past fifteen years, um, and yeah, I, I will be right one day. And then yeah. I can write a book on it, Joe, and you can yeah, and I'll listen to read it. it. Yeah, some I'll sort of to wizards. It. It's easier to listen. Right, yeah. uh, I'm going to sell DAX because 
of that and I genuinely did I actually look at this and think it looked all right as an idea so very short term this is the hourly chart uh, I saw it rallied into uh, you know a key level here I always like these levels sort of the first a retest of the candle prior to a sort of impulsive move lower also got a 50% fib level in and around here as well posted a bearish outside candle over the last hour so I'm going to set it now 15,216 there uh, nice tight stop well tight ish 90 points 15,306 let's go for a humding all the way down here uh, 4.47 R target 14,000 815 lovely nice one yeah is there a trend line there not quite not bad though yeah that'll do nice uh, one. we'll see how it goes non-farm friday anything can happen steve over to you yeah well i'm going to stick with my s p triple bottom formation i like it uh the stop on a non-farm friday feels a bit tight uh, i'm getting long around about the 4400 level the stop is going to be at just below 4370 4369 uh the target 4489 so looking for this uh market to explode so i'm going against you but remember people us markets european markets they're the same but they are different that's all i want to say on it you know I don't, I don't need to say anymore. You know what I mean, Joe, don't you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just buy any dip in the US, basically, and you'll yeah, be fine. They do. They, they sort of, they've got different personalities. Uh, they've got different ways about them. There's different ways to trade them. Uh, and yeah, they do get dragged along with each other's euphoria and everything like that. But uh, really, we're, we're one world, but we're very different people. Yeah. I don't want to get morbid. That's uh, quite deep. Yeah, let's let's get let's move on. OK, so um, numbers today, as we've said, non-farm payrolls is front and centre. Payrolls expected to rebound to 500,000 from 235,000 a month previous, while the unemployment rate falls to 5.1% from 5.2%. So only a minor adjustment in the uh, unemployment rate, but going in the right direction. Um, we've also got the Canadian employment report at the same time. Unemployment rate expected to fall to 7% in Canada. Um, so keep an eye out for those numbers today. Obviously, they will dominate, um, you know, what's going on in markets today. And uh, we are probably going to see quite muted price action up until that point. So good luck if you're trading today. Um, it's not one for the faint hearted if you're involved in um, currencies or indices today. But um, yeah, best of luck. And we'll be back on Monday. Fantastic. Cheers, guys. Have a good day.